Gabrielle and Paul because I'm, you know, I'm sure you've heard me speak before and I apologise that this is probably all about rotary business, you see, so uh, if you can just bear with me once again. It probably has varied a little bit from when you last heard it. Uh, I just thought I'd start tonight talking about the Rotary Foundation. Uh, we had the seminar, as was mentioned, on Sunday, and I think everyone would agree that it was a, a pretty good seminar, actually. We, a lot of ground was covered, and it was interesting to hear uh, the keynote speaker was Dr. Joseph Holder, who some of you may know. Uh, he's been around for a while. He's a uh, former peace uh, fellow and uh, a very well-known man around the place now, a uh, man from Kenya. Uh, and then the other young woman whose name escapes me at the moment, the, the lady talking about using dance in peace and all that sort of thing. But they, anyway, they were two Erica, great presentations. Erica Rose. Erica, Erica Rose, that's right. Uh, who actually is also a former peace. She's from Montana in the US and uh, She's done her peace studies here at UQ and has now moved on to do a PhD at QUT, but uh, she gave a, a, another very interesting address. So it was a good day. Uh, the foundation, one of the, oh sorry, I should say the disappointing thing for the day for me was that Eric Wood announced that, uh, that in this Rotary year so far, the contributions that have come into our district for the foundation are very low. They're probably the lowest on, in recent years. And that's a real concern uh, because, let's face it, the Rotary Foundation is the lifeblood of Rotary. It's the foundation that allows us to do the things that we do in the world. And, uh, and the other important thing is that remember that uh, with this new scheme that we've got now with, Rotary, with the foundation, the money that comes in in a particular year of, of that money, half of it comes back to our district for district designated funds in three years' time. And the reason that's important is that every Rotary Club loves to do their own work, their work in their own community. Every Rotary Club I've ever come across, and some more than others, want to, they want to emphasise on their own, uh, sorry, place emphasis on their own community, work in their community. So it's a bit of concern that, you know, one, one way of getting funds to do that is to, is to get some funds from the district designated fund grants. So if there's not much money coming in, then there won't be much to hand out in three years' time. And honestly, these, this new system, I'm sure that in the past there have been ways of doing it as well, but in the current system of designated grants where decisions can be made about grants in the district, uh, it, it's working really well. And in this current year where, where all the funds have already gone, uh, one great example of this is the Rotary Club of Mullaney that applied for three or four or five grants, all small ones, very small. Uh, but all of those, all of that grant money will go to work in the district, in the, in the community of Mullaney. So it's a great example. You can do work in your own district with, with a district designated fund grant. But if the money's not there, we can't do anything except, you know, your own fundraising, which of course happens anyway, but it's been nice to have the extra money if it's available.